Okay. So good evening, good morning, everyone. Uh, today it's already, I think, 10 or 11th uh, meeting of our uh, Disco Engine team. And uh, today I would like, uh, like to, to make a next chapter on on uh, on some uh, let's say definitions and uh, starting points because uh, we need to clarify a couple of things like some definitions for instance what we call uh, pre-processing pre pre because already we uh, many persons uh, use uh, this word in many contexts on slack and it can be very confusing both for us and for the external people uh, we need also, I think, uh, like a re um, a remake uh, this, uh, the discussion we had today, uh, we had yesterday about uh, how we prune and clean our data uh, because it's uh, the proposal by Anton uh, stuck on uh, some, let's say, met, met with some disagreement on, on Slack. So I think uh, we should uh, clarify on that. And then we have some time for next uh, question and answers uh, later on. So maybe uh, we have already uh, Anton and Rose, uh, and it was some, um, let's say, kind of dispute between them on, on, on Slack. So uh, could you repeat your points regarding cl uh, cleaning data and pruning data? And what, what does it mean to you? So I could I could start on that. Okay. Uh, so it just like this week we had two conversations. One of them this public Q and A session, and another one more of a like technical, smaller, direct talk with uh, AI two people with Kyle, who is responsible to maintaining coordinating data set. And Kyle himself outright told us that like guys, this like this is the data. We're like Wikipedia, right? And if you want to build some like NLP system or some application, whatever you do, you need to figure out how to tailor that data set for your needs, right? So if we want to build something for, I don't know, physics, right? Based on Wikipedia corpus data, you need to filter out physics, you know, portion of it and discard everything else. So Core 19 is like that. So for our needs, we need to keep in mind that this data set is just what it is corpus of noisy data. Now we need to figure out what is noise for our application and filter it out. That's, that's my position. And uh, kind of, well, this search engine is data science first people. So that's why we usually by default have this in mind when we say, oh, we need filter out, pre-process something. You just simply, we need to find a really good, like uh, low noise to signal ratio corpus train our embeddings, whatever we want to do. Again, there are a lot of things even within scope of this channel we wanted to do. So this is our goal and this is what I advocate always. Right? Okay. Like okay. the goal is not to filter out something because like right now, Core 19, like we know it's a noisy data. If we build, like if we find any causal links, causal links in noise is just the noise. So we need to first step back, filter it out, find really relevant links, model them, and then we could go back to the whole corpus of data to find more. At least this is how any ML project I ever did, ever research was always like this. Okay, and Rose, uh, could you clarify your uh, position on that? So I 100% agree with Anton, and I think the, the question is just what, what is it we are trying to do? If we're trying to build an engine that can work for everybody, the, fil the filtering, and, and I, I, I have not been involved the last few days, but I had heard things like, we'll filter out only things that are related to COVID-19. Like, I don't see that that's gonna work for anybody. It's certainly gonna not gonna work for me. It's not gonna work for Jeremy, right? And so those decisions that you make, it just depends upon the use case. There's a way to filter. For example, if you wanted to do if we were taking Jeremy's project, we would probably start filtering on, um, you know, molecular substances or drugs or something. We would find a way to mm -hmm. filter. 
right? But if we're trying to make something that's going to work for me and for Jeremy, you got a pretty broad search there. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, because I try to like to visualize everything we already discussed in terms of preprocessing different types of uh, elements, uh, language elements we extract in terms of lemma, uh, entity recognition, entity relation, uh, uh, um, extraction, etc. And uh, I came up with something like that. Let me share my screen just for a moment, and then uh, I, 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 I'll give you uh, the word back. Something here. Um, um, uh, this concert here. I tried, like, say, kind of to draw a kind of a draft about uh, things we we discussed last days. So, uh, for instance, metadata uh, metadata based filtering proposed by by Slava uh, would involve things like uh, just uh, filtering based on on some uh, things that we can derive from metadata, like the date. Like authors or journals, etc. We can also use um, filtering based on Elasticsearch queries. So we can filter out things that have those words uh, for sure in uh, in um, in respective documents. Or uh, Elasticsearch uh, with combined with semantic search. It means that actually for all data we need uh, raw text, lemmas, UMLs other uh, entity uh, recognition things other than UMLS and also embeddings for semantic search. Uh, be it in uh, Elasticsearch, be it in Woosh, be it in Face uh, uh, or a node. And also we have, it's not visible here, just I'll just, uh, we have also three levels of data, sentences, paragraph sections, and entire documents. Because I lack in like when I talk to different persons, it was it was always the question. Okay, we we talk about elastic search for sentences or for whole paragraphs, or do we mean that for the whole documents? Because there are completely three different uh, levels of data, and three, let's say, of course, sentences cons like all uh, documents consist of sentences etc. Et but when we feed those data into Elasticsearch, we need to define it's like now it's a single sentence, it's the whole paragraph that is, let's say, item, a single item, or it's a whole document. And I would like just always like remind you that actually we at we at at, at least now we we are we um, move uh, on three different le levels of dimension in three different dimensions in the sense that we have different levels of granularity then we have different uh, types of data we extract from the raw text like lemmas humans etc and we want also to filter those things at least for for now by uh, two different uh, in two different ways either by metadata uh, metadata based filtering or search query based uh, filtering and yeah that was all i i wanted to to share with you uh, mm -hmm. I, I also i also want to clarify a few things especially for us yeah so first of all uh, what lucas is presenting is called common infrastructure and in our case it's uh, common data infrastructure so basically your case your use case is very specific and what we are trying to achieve we want to actually to, to be able to process thousands or probably hundreds of thousands of these kind of use cases. This is why you need infrastructure. I, I hope it's correct. Uh, it's uh, clear for you because I, what I, I hear, understand. we should we should follow like your use case and learn from it. But this is completely a uh, wrong approach. You know, I was in a lot of projects uh, where actually research was in the head and not people responsible for infrastructure. And it never works well for other uh, people from other, doing other research. Because you are concentrating all resources on building something to cover specific use case and you will do nothing for other people. What we're trying to do, we are trying actually to uh, consolidate people to actually to use the same infrastructure. And this is why we are talking about adding like knowledge graph and other things search engine and in my opinion what uh, Brandon does now is just beautiful. So basically 
it's not perfect. Of course, there is uh, some critics from John. I can understand that. But at least you, you have all, all necessary information. You, you can search on sentences. You can apply your own pipeline and it's reusable. And what we want to achieve is just reusability. And if we'll concentrate on your specific use case or, or use case of Jeremy, it will take a lot of resources from us. And in the end, uh, probably you, you will be happy, but uh, we will do nothing uh, for other people from coronavirus. This is I, just, I think, obvious. And just, I understand. I understand yes, the difficulty. I, I, can, I can just explain vision that uh, we try to follow. So just imagine, uh, in our case, data is uh, fuel, right? So, okay, so it's, it's not fuel, it's oil. And what we're trying to get actually to uh, get from oil fuel, and we're building petrol stations for all people everywhere in the world. And all research centers after we'll build these petrol stations will be able to fuel their, their engines and to uh, actually to drive in, in different directions. So this is why the common infrastructure, I think the most important thing in, in this project because after we'll get something done other tasks actually can be used uh, what we are creating and they can actually link all their data to our data and this is how we can actually provide common uh, interface to query all data in one time i hope it's clear now i understand what you're trying to do i just think it's it's hard if you go back to your diagram uh, you, you know, uh, I think it's feasible, really. I'm just, okay. I just want to, all I can yeah. tell you is from my perspective, okay? You guys are going to do it or not do it. And if you go back to your diagram for one second. Yeah, yeah, sure. Just, uh, just uh, let me share uh, my screen. Uh -huh. Okay, here we are. It's good. Okay, so if I'm understanding correctly, what you're talking about doing is filtering at the very beginning based on younger than 2000, mm -hmm. so... Old studies, new studies? No, it would be just an option to use metadata uh, to filter out, for instance, everything younger or older than November to, uh, 2019. Like we, we can apply like all the data here will have those things mm -hmm. will, uh, will be on uh, this, uh, this, uh, these three levels and will be uh, be possible to filter out by those uh, features like metadata or like search query based um, filtering. Uh, so Lucas, Lucas uh, I think I understand the problem. So basically, um, uh, just think about process based uh, actions. So what we are trying to achieve with filtering, just to create some process that will allow to actually to filter out some uh, relevant materials to something. In our case, it can be COVID-19, SARS, whatever. And what we actually want to add to this process is just uh, annotation. So basically people should, should be able to uh, query documents to collect uh, some papers in one collection. And after uh, annotators should be able actually to uh, provide feedback if it's relevant or no. And this feedback will go back to our knowledge graph and it should be a usable process. So it's not like we are going to just to filter out um, some some documents from collection, and we will not uh, we will forget about other other collections, um, other topics. No, it's just actually to create piece of infrastructure that will be able uh, to do to re to actually to allow people to repeat this action with different topics. Is it clear enough? Um, maybe, maybe. I guess I'm, what's the first step here? Everything the is the first step. Uh, uh, Rose, everything here is the first step because everything will have those stuff here. I mean, uh, those lemmas. Uh, metadata, uh, like uh, those types of filtering will be available always. Like you can combine, for instance, uh, uh, metadata filtering with some search query filtering. And then you will have also always three levels of uh, granularity, always for all data, for each paper. It's like uh, the same, like we make those data that are now raw text into, let's say, into something that will have uh, at least those, uh, those three, uh, let's say, um, facets or three sides of uh, features. 
Yeah, so basically, uh, we will create a component that will be able to query uh, uh, do uh, documents from collections. And after, uh, we're already busy with this annotation tool uh, called Hypothesis. And using this tool, people should be able to create these annotations. And actually, we don't care. It's a research specific thing what you want to, uh, what kind of papers you want to collect. If it's COVID 19 or SARS or something else, we don't care. We're just trying to, uh, to create a reusable component that can be integrated in our infrastructure. And we want to learn from this process how to actually to connect it to knowledge graph because people should really provide feedback. If all the statements we are going to extract with other tools like Indra, they're correct, yes or no. Oh, yeah. I, I have a few questions for um, Slava and actually Anton, because I think we got to consider what's the first filter, which is how, okay. are, how is Core 19 being selected? Uh, so, Imran, yeah. I think that everything here, or as already uh, said, is the first step, because in the first step, like we want uh, to have, uh, like in V9 and uh, now in this version of data provided by Brandon, we have all types of uh, things having uh, being here we will have with elastic search and semantic search all things pro, uh, wanted here and uh, with uh, the fact that we can uh, split our data into sentences paragraphs and, and then combine it into whole uh, documents we have those three levels of granularity that's the first step i mean everything here is the first step because it's our oh data gosh. You got to consider that the this is the first step for us, but um, as you know, Anton was saying, right? How is the Allen Institute actually selecting these papers, right? And I just want to know: is there did, like how did they get these forty thousand papers? Like, did they search for only virus-related papers, or did they just take everything from all journals? I think they um, they actually post their query on the. Uh, the challenge page. I remember seeing that. Um, they, okay. Yeah, we can yeah, so the, see it. Yeah, Christine is correct. Yeah. We definitely could look in how they created their data set, but my point is that the whole sentiment, how they do it, right, is, is just simply they try to gather like all, everything that is indexed in PubMed and other like their partners that is everything that is labeled coronavirus, it's in COVID-19. So like, again, we need, to, we need to keep in mind that this is a noisy data. Uh, yeah, and is, again, yeah. we need to also kind of, as I started to feel that not everybody is on the same page when we talk about filtering, because there are multiple stages. We have multiple components in the process. And at different time, you again perform different filtering, different, you know, kind of. I think from my understanding, from my understanding is that we're not really gonna just throw away any papers. We just want to enable people to use filtering to get the data that they want to work with, yeah. and then you can use it for whatever things that you are going to build. And then, and the data set is not. It's also enriched by all the other data types like embedding entity mm -hmm. then you can also search by different like lab granularities i think that's what, what I'm, I'm, my understanding is instead of we're yeah. actually really gonna subset the whole data set in some way yeah <clears throat> yeah so like again what i'm proposing is again if something that's related to indexing of the whole data set of course you run that index on the whole data set right so now you can query it you know perform whatever you want afterwards but the moment when we talk about specific embedding, for example, then some of them don't work that, that well. That's what we already collected that information from round one, right? So Brandon all these weeks did like tremendous job of running different indices, enrichments, and some of the, again, really cool like embeddings. But at the end of the day, not ever, like we, ha we weren't able to use all of that because some of it produces great results, some of it produced like really crappy results. And again, it's not because Brandon did something wrong, it's just because some of those processes kind of like, oh, you know, now we can identify the issues there. The COVID-19 is noisy. So some of the approaches are simply are not feasible to, to perform well. So we need to relook at them 
And this requires, okay, we need a better corpus of data to train embeddings, for example. And so yeah, and, uh, so I this think is what we need to do. Yeah, I think it's very important also to uh, consider supervision because of course you can uh, trust uh, machine learning that it can actually do a job, but it's not always the case. You know, if you don't have human somewhere in the middle, uh, you can get some garbage in and garbage out. So it's, it's just obvious, I think. So this is why we actually we will start with really nice uh, high quality data set that uh, will be used as basically as training set for all uh, papers that will be uh, coming to collection. And now we have 5,000 more papers. And uh, recently I also queried uh, CrossF. I think they contain uh, like 100 million, 12, yeah, something like that uh, publications. And I already found uh, about uh, uh, 11,000 uh, new publications. Only metadata, but I think it can be relevant. So, but, but how to know what, what kind of publications actually we, we should consider to enrich our corpus? This is why uh, we, we need this model and uh, something like work to work. And so to, to recognize relevant publications and uh, to add to uh, our collection. So, it's not possible to avoid this step at the moment. It's too noisy. Uh, I don't believe it's possible to, to use this collection as port 19 as it's now. So, um, Rose, sorry, uh, John, go ahead. Um, what I'll say is again that uh, we need to be considering multiple pipelines in parallel. What we're describing right now is one pipeline, essentially, right? Like. Anytime that you take a filtering step and consider a subset of the data, it is a specific pipeline. There is a different filtering step that we could do that would define a different pipeline, right? Like if instead of filtering based on whether or not it's, uh, you know, specifically uh, COVID-19 related in humans, we instead filtered uh, to just look at things that uh, had to do with uh, genetics of uh, viruses like that would be define a different pipeline that uh, would be useful for this tool. Um, so I'm not saying that we need to try to define all of those pipelines right now um, because they're an infinite number. Um, but uh, we should be exploring some of these in parallel um, because over indexing on one limits the use case to you know a subset of use cases. Um, John, I think you missed the first part when I tried to explain about common data infrastructure. So basically what we are doing now, we are trying to get all data in more or less like structured way. So all sentences and other stuff in, in Elasticsearch and, and MongoDB. I got and, that. And you can build, um, if you have one use case, and I already asked Brandon, Brandon to create a notebook with different examples, how to query and what, what you, you can get out from this uh, process, so uh, we can actually uh, engage people to create other processes and actually to improve quality of, of what we already have. So your data processing step will be done by community after we'll see, okay, there is some value, it's not perfect yet, but, but at least we can add something to it. And I think it's, uh, it's, it should be perfectly uh, fine for all uh, NLP experts that we'll, we'll, we already have to, use, to reuse the same data and to build their own pipelines. Probably, I don't know, we'll, we'll get like 10 different pipelines. That's fine, this is what we want. We want to actually to, to be able to investigate in different directions and uh, we will see what kind of results people can bring and what will work better. Yeah, uh, I mean, again, I agree around establishing a data infrastructure and uh, you know, it is still the case that some of these different pipelines may need different infrastructure and we'll find that out as we move on and, uh, you know, handle that. Um, but what I'm saying specifically is that, it, you know, these filtering steps should not be limiting the data set ahead of time in any way, right? Like, we should not just be performing embeddings um, and, you know, not giving people the resources to perform the embeddings on a different subset of data. Uh, that was, yeah, but, the, but this yeah, is what NLP, NLP expert that, let's say, performs specific embedding decides. That's the whole point. We have one infrastructure, right, that is capable of carrying different containers and 
and who the expert who performs specific use case, you know, decides all of that. So nobody is telling that we are right now saying people like, oh, you filter out that stuff. No, no, no. It's we're building infrastructure capable of doing all of this. It just here is again. We did round submission number one, and we did a lot of manual pipelines already, and they all were in this direction. A lot of cool pre-processing, NLP, Wizardy was performed before on the whole coordinating data set. And then afterwards, every team was filtering out by keywords, was actually kind of trying to, to find like this in this messy, messy data set, enriched data set. And later I get feedback from some of the team that's like, wow, we can't, you know, NLP is like useless for us. Every, all of our results are simply, we're manually filtering out did this, that, like asked uh, professionals to like annotate and so on. So for us, it's a signal that for round two, ah, hey, hold on a second. Something is wrong in this whole process. We're not simply automating it. We need to do a couple of swaps in, in terms of steps that we need to do. And one of them is essentially, ah, oh, wait a second, Core 19 is like a noisy data set. We assume that it was a really good corpus. That's why we already, all our NLP folks jump on it immediately. And then we were like, you know, working afterwards. It's not the case anymore. We know that's not the case anymore. That's why some of the pre-processing is definitely needed. And then all of the NLP folks need to be aware that, oh, wait a second what should I filter out for my pipeline to work? So again, we're not doing one pipeline. We are already building something that will be capable of swapping those steps quickly. Uh, yeah. yeah, right. So because all the embeddings and pre-processing are done on, uh, on the whole, whole data set. It's not just a subset of it. So no, it's, not, think, yeah. it's not the option that we want just to like to get rid of some of the data. No, we want to keep them all, but as uh, described by Anton, we want to uh, like to be, to be able to identify things that are, uh, that are has, that have some value to us uh, in terms, for instance, of uh, metadata. Uh, and uh, it was also my, my point of disagreement in terms of em embeddings because I would uh, keep also general embeddings for everything like because I know okay we we, we, we can uh, we can uh, produce some embeddings just on a sub uh, on a subset of uh, of the data but actually to perform for instance elastic search with embedding uh, with semantic search combined with a, a, a semantic search we need embeddings for everything so we need some embeddings that are will be available for every uh, uh, for every paper for every sentence so space embeddings or uh, maybe we should run bert over the entire corpus because otherwise it won't be possible to enhance uh, elastic search with the vectors or annoy or face or whatever we add additionally uh add addition okay uh because uh, yeah that's the, my point because anton uh, i think uh, mm, put a lot of stress on uh, the idea that those embeddings should be actually trained on something that is already uh, somehow uh, predefined or, or filtered out. That's right. Let me, you know what, let, let me kind of simplify the situation a little bit. So I would like, I would like to, for us to move to the next step when we actually model the content, right? And let's simplify it, like forget about NLP, et cetera. Mm -hmm. We just have some data set in and we want to run principal component analysis, right? We want to find three components that we want to slice and dice our data for. If you take the big noisy data set, like the way you find these four components like to rotate the space will be, you know, one solution. But if I want to, let's say, want to do clustering afterwards, or for example, like, or a simple classification problem, I would like to find like a really relevant data so I can find this, you know, principal component analysis to rotate this space the way that I could probably immediately see the, you know, how to, to slice the data for two classes. And do you guys get my point? Like those who are yeah. familiar with them. Yeah. So th that, that's my point. Like I want to have, 
an infrastructure that I could run my notebook, import the data, and I'm simply putting a flag, not noisy data. Boom, and now all of my pipelines for all of that now should work nicely. Because right now, it's just this. I'm importing the data, like forgetting doing any pre-processing, and then kind of like, hey, wait a second, why my PCA is just like, every time I run it, it just like produces the result, like it's, it's the same blob of data points in the space, no matter which, you know, components I'm like doing projection in the 3D space or something. And now if we talk about embeddings, all of the NLP stuff, this is highly dimensional data, right? So it's it, like, there is no good way of even visualizing this. We finally got Brandon, by the way, published something on Slack with really good clusters over there, right? We need to have pictures like this where we see separate like clusters of data, not just blob. And then just see, oh, what do we want to do with it? Like. You know, this approach, does it work? What, what use case it covers? Like, I don't know what it covers. It's just a blob of, of points. That's, that's my position over here. I, yeah. I agree. I think everyone agrees that there needs to have an infrastructure. And we all agree that it's going to be optional flags. We're not, and like, as Christine said, we're not hard filtering anything. We're not going to throw away any data. But I think um, what the dispute might be is um, efforts of annotation. Right, because um, Rose was saying that she does not think it will be feasible for having uh, a huge infrastructure around everyone, everything. But and Slava was saying uh, we should actually have some annotations. But given yes. our limited resources annotations, we should kind of carefully consider because if we if we do filters like like unsupervised LDA filters or metadata filters, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. But the topic really at hand is how do we best use annotation resources sure but th that's exactly how i would approach it right i don't want to annotators annotate the same thing over and over again if i could cluster nicely some of the data points right i could only give one point to for, for annotation for annotators to use their time on and then label the rest of the points like automatically right so if you have good infrastructure good proper like machine learning type of pipelines at the end of the day you can do uh, with less resources much more work and this is what search engine is about right is, we is want there a to schema build the physics? tool now uh, what do you mean schema sorry um i didn't mean to interrupt but i was just asking like in terms of um if we wanted to have uh filters based off our you know classification using annotations um, do we, is there any kind of document or something showing what do we want to list out as things to be filtered out on? So at this point we, for that, we don't have anything because we need to do the steps that we're discussing right now, infrastructure that takes so many days for whatever reason, we're discussing something that is like later in the pipeline of, of, of this process. <laughs> so we will have that, but first we need infrastructure to actually see what type of clusters do we have? Is like, is it feasible to do what I just proposed, for example? But we don't know yet. We're just still at the square root zero, as everybody else in the world, who are like, oh, Core 19, we just need to process the whole data set. Um, I think um, that filtering actually should be connected to knowledge graph. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so it's uh, it's not reliable if you query uh, Elasticsearch or whatever search engine because there is disambiguation. You can find a lot of not relevant materials, and only to guarantee that actually what you you, you will get is high quality is just a query knowledge graph. And in knowledge graph, like, like we already know, there is a triple, and you know exactly what you will get. And all these nice visualizations with clusters. Uh, everything should be based on knowledge graph because how else you can actually guarantee results. I hope it's clear. Yeah. So knowledge graph, if you have a lot of like false links, noisy links, then it's useless. But if it has nice links, okay, now we could, you know, propagate forward in our process. Okay. okay. There, so there are some further questions because we we're slowly uh, closing this session. 
and uh, maybe because we we can uh, keep discussing it tomorrow uh, when there are still some questions or like uh, somebody is uneasy uh, with things we are doing now. Uh, but other questions that that, uh, that one uh, related to like say like the general uh, general uh, pipeline structure and database structure. We can just talk on Slack, I think. Yeah, okay. So let's let's keep it on, on Slack and maybe something uh, overnight or over day uh, will be clarified. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for uh, your participation, for your presence. And uh, we hear and we see us tomorrow, the same time, the same place. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Bye.